Hello, welcome to Aru Television Africa and this is Maritime Business News Update on Analysis on this beautiful station. Trust me, on this program we'll take you around the world of maritime, keeping you abreast of events and happening in the maritime sector. I am Jessica Adams and today we are at Kirikiri Lighter Terminal where we have uh, so many trucks parked on the road. What is the main reason for these trucks? Is it because of the drivers or because there's no holding way? Because it's obvious the transporters are yearning for holding way. All this put together will be dishing out to you. Stay tuned. We'll be right Maritime business is update on analysis on our own television Africa. We are still at Kirikiri Lighter Terminal and we have a transporter here who will be telling us some of the challenges they are being faced with at this particular place. Hello, sir. Morning. What's your name, please? My name is Emeka Omega. Okay, Mr. Emeka Omega. Can you tell us what's happening here? Why there's so much truck everywhere? Yeah, the traffic is too much and the congestion of this side is too much. There's nowhere to drop the empty. Okay. Some people who carry the empty over two weeks, they will not drop it. Okay. And they can see that the load is very, very too tight. Okay. They're part double parking everywhere. Even the police people that are controlling here are maltreating everybody bad. So nobody's happy with them. This truck has been here for since last week. They are, they are not yet dropped the container. Okay, so what would you tell us now? What is the main problem? Why are they packed here? The main problem is the inside is full. There's no bike to take the container to second gate. Because if there is a batch that will be taken there to second gate, they can be able to drop it so that they will load another work. That's why they are here. Okay, what do you think is the solution now? Uh, the solution that government will put high into it or the uh, SDV, what they call the SDV, five star, people that have the, the terminal here. Okay. They will put high into it and they will see the police to assist us because police are doing, they are maltreating the drivers bad. Okay. Uh -huh. In what way? Can you tell us in what way? That's the what way. They are used to pack one, one thousand naira here. The new two star that is here, calling DTO, is taking twenty thousand naira for their hand, making things to be difficult. And to go inside now, the man is turning everybody all the time. That's the problem. All right, thank you very much. That's uh, Mr. Emmanuel. He just talked about the challenges they are faced with in this particular area. We are still at the Kirikiri Lighter Terminal. As you can see, all over after a heavy rain down the uh, rain pour you see everywhere messed up trucks are being parked everywhere and right now we are with the transporters they are complaining that there's no holding bay as a matter of fact some of the drivers are even sleeping we are going to take a walk to their sectariats where we're going to be meeting them and how they're going to tell us some of the major challenges they are facing right here at the curriculum lighter terminal as you can see now the driver here is lying down simply because there's no job because they feel there's no holding bed, the containers are packed everywhere. They don't have a place to discharge them, so how do they pick up a new one? You can see him here, he's just lying down, jobless. And those people are people who have family all over. They have children, they cater for, they have children, they're paying school fees and all that. So right now, as you can see, all these men here, they are transporters. Okay, I think we'll need to talk to one of them. All right, sir. Good day, sir. What's your name, please? My name is Mr. Manuel. Okay, then who are you? What, what I'm do you a do? transporter in this domain. Okay. We are the Truck Owners Association of Cricket Lata Terminal. The problem we are having in this industry now is number one. The shipping companies are giving us headache. You will carry their container, they turn your vehicle as a holding bag. You will carry it for 12 days, 15 days. After okay. driving the long queue of the, trans, uh, the hold up, getting to the terminal where you will drop, they will say no space. By the time we pay ransom like 50,000 naira, there will be a space. Okay. If you let pay 50,000 naira, they will keep you there. If you let it is left in the night, when the job have closed, they will offload the container. That is the number one problem we are facing in this industry. Okay, from a reliable source, we land as a VIP position. That is what I'm saying. By 2 p.m. in the night, or 2 a.m., that is when your staff will drop that container and collect 50,000 naira from you. But when you can't pay 50,000 naira, there will be no space for you to drop. So can you mention the shipping companies involved? Oh, oh. Are you saying all? All shipping companies. Oh. If you get to think and to drop, 
they will say that they are having holding back at my two. When you get to my two unity terminal, they will say no space. When you get down here, that's much line. There will, there will be no space. By the time you pay to 50,000 naira, there will be space. When you go to Sapid, there will say no space. That of the same year. When you go to every other place, there will say no space. Then, secondly, the Nigerian armed forces have turned the road, as they have turned the transporters as their ATM machine. Can you mention one of them, please? The whole armed forces. Go to my two right here now. You are bringing with your trunk. Before they allow their trunk to pass, you pay 20,000 naira. That is their charges. If you follow from all the way from the Alakijan Eastern, along that road, back to back, they have to get. They share themselves. When you climb the quickly bridge, get into port, the Nigerian Navy force, they also share themselves there. We pay ransom. We are being devastated. We are being pushed to the wall. We are no longer happy. And if we continue like this, we get the three weeks, we go out of the road. Okay, so what do you want the government to do Nigerian now? Nigerian government should intervene. Let the shipping company provide a reliable holding bag where we will drop their container. It cannot be holding their container on top of their lorry by the time you drop it because it's not entering. Now they will be charging the, uh, the importer and the clearing agents. By the time you drop it, the clearing agent will come and carry you that you have spoiled his deposit. That you are owing, you go and pay. So we don't want it to continue. Let them give us a holding bag. If it is Brower, Brower is no longer functionable. And they have a sea there that they can pack this container through barge to the seaport. So they can use Brower, that former back lining. They can use it as a heading bay where the all shipping company can drop their container and pick it through batch. We should stop. This suffering is too much for Nigerians. We are not slaves in this country. We are Nigerians. Okay. Thank you very much. Are you saying the lack of the holding bay is the reason why but there's high in transportation? Space. They don't have space where they will drop their containers. Okay, you don't have space. The shipping company has no space. They don't receive their containers. They only receive exports where there is load that the people will pay freight as is heavy. Okay, recently we got an information that um, there's hike in price, there's increase in transportation. Where it used to be 300, now it's, 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 it's containers are carrying for over 400, 500 and above. That is lie. The truth there is that by the time you struggle for two weeks for you to drop your empty container, then you have to look for a way to cover up. But it's not to that amount they are calling. The hike of the price is to the traffic, the bad road, and the non-entrance of the empty containers. All right, that was Mr. Emmanuel Okafor. He's a transporter. He just complained about the lack of holding bay and the problems they are encountering right here at Kirikiri Lighter Terminal. You can see the transporters are everywhere. No job for them. They don't have businesses because the roads are bad and there's no holding bay for containers to be dropped. All right, we have a, a transporter here as well. Sir, um, your name, please. Um, OC Forwarder, Nam OC Benjamin, okay. the chapter secretary of Naga. Okay. KLT chapter. All right. What's going on here around this KLT terminal now? It's unbearable and purely unprofessional. Uh, sometimes I ask whether we are still in the era of slave trade. In our own country, people that call themselves expatriates come here to milk us, turn this country slaves. In short, we don't know what we are doing here. In short, we are out of business. Sometimes I ask what type of country are we in? I don't, we don't even understand what is happening. We think of going on the air, we think of fighting, and we believe fighting will not solve the problem. Violence will not solve the problem. We are calling on Mr. President, and so the highest office of this country should intervene in this issue. Because there is nothing else we can do. They have turned us to slaves. The holding base shipping companies, they come here, they, they, they turn transporters truck. To, be, to become a holding bay. At the same time, they extort the deposit we, we put at, uh, in the shipping company as a collateral before they release the containers for us. And in as well as these containers remain on that truck, our money is being taken away. And at the end, they will debit the same importer that we represent. It's damn wrong. Okay. What exactly are you saying now that the uh, shipping companies being operated by foreigners are not treating Nigeria well? They turn us to be slaves in our own country. All right. And we don't want to take it anymore. All right, Data, it's a freight forwarder. He's still complaining of the problem they are encountering around Kirikiri Lighter Terminal and other terminals as well. As you can see, all over there are containers everywhere. 
everywhere and trust me, Maritime Business News will take you around the world of Maritime, keeping you abreast of events and happening. And today we are at Kirikiri Lighter Terminal. We'll feed you more. We'll be right back. Okay, we have transporters here too. Everybody wants to complain about the same thing as it is affecting their health. All right, sir, what's your name, please? My name is Engineer Rika Weadeo. Okay, what is going on here? Because I can see on your faces that you are not happy. Exactly. We are not happy because this is 24 hours uh, road, but now hardly you can pass here for two hours. Everywhere is green locked. There is no movement of vehicles from here. Everywhere is blocked from here down to Apapa, and the government, the government, as if they don't even know what is going on, they forget us. Okay, uh, you talk about the government. I learned from one of your colleagues that uh, the some forces are extorting money from you. How true is this? Uh, every the agency that are bringing from the government to this place, we only try to enrich them. Because instead of doing the job, they will be exhausting money from the trailers and the trailer drivers and the tankers. That is exactly what is happening. It is true. They don't do any work. They only come here to enrich them. That is their purpose of coming here. We are fed up. We are fed up. Okay, how is this affecting your daily life? It's in short, they have already paralyzed our business. We can work move. We can't move from one place to another to do business. They paralyze everywhere, everywhere, every sector of the economy. They have already paralyzed it because there is no movement for vehicle, for Okada, and then for pedestrian. We cannot move from one place to another. We are fed up. All right, thank you very much. Thanks. Sir, very what's your name, please? Yeah, my name is uh, Osondo Ezeji. Okay, what's going on around this accident? Uh, in fact, what is going on here, we are not happy. We are not happy with, of what is going on here. It's very, very unfortunate, and we are happy that you people are here today. You know, for you to tell you what is going on here. In fact, many enforcement agencies are collecting money from the transporters along this My Two Expressway. If, if you want to cross from My Two Bridge here, you have to pay at least 20,000 um, 20, naira or 15,000 naira to cross a flat body of a a, a truck. Okay, who are you paying hotel. this money to? Can you tell us? These are navies and the law enforcement agencies like armies and navy and police uh, police agencies. So how much, can you tell us how much is the maximum and how much is the minimum? The maximum is about 15,000 naira. Why minimum? Minimum, um, the maximum is about 25,000 naira. Why the minimum is about 15,000 naira? Whenever you cross, they will start money from the hospital. Right, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, that was a, a transporter who just complained of the Nigerian uh, Air Force, the Navy, the Army have sorted money from them. All right, and these transporters are just, they, 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 they just said that the business are crumbling. There's no business, and when they get to the my two access, the Navy has sorted money from them from between the, the range of 15 to 20,000 Naira. All this are one of the major uh, causes of the problems that are bringing down our sector. We shouldn't forget that 75% of our economy in this country is generated from the marine type sector. And I think this sector should be looked into by the federal government as it is one of the major sectors financing the budget of the country. Keep watching. I will see you. We'll be right back. Our Root TV, the roots of Africa.
welcome back to Marine Time Business News Update and Analysis on our television Africa. And today, our personality of the week is Engineer Umadi Emmanuel. He is the CEO Emmanuel Globus and also Azilia Oil and Gas Distribution Network. He's also the chairman, KLT chapter of Nagaf. And today, he has a lot to talk about the situation around the Kirikiri Terminal. Sir, good day, sir. Good day. Okay, now we'll be to your name, please. I'm Engineer Umar Emanuel, the chairman of Naga KLT chapter. All right, sir. So coming into this access, we saw trucks parked around and no drivers. What's going on here? The issue is that the shipping companies, as far as I'm concerned, are defrauding our country by what they call a holding bay. Okay. They don't have a holding bay. And some drivers you see when you are coming, as you stated, have stayed there three weeks, two weeks. No business is moving, no containers are dropped. Eventually, they find their way where they will drop them. Some of them bring their cases in my office. They ask them to pay all the way from 70,000 naira for one by 40 to drop empties, for them, them all, and, 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 and them one by 20, 40,000 naira. You see all these things hit back on masses, all these hit backs on our importers. For example, if an importer is um, using some few money to clear his goods, on the way arriving to Nigeria, they tell him that the tariff of transporter, which is loading about 70,000 naira to trade for Alaba, is now 500. What do you expect the importer to do? The thing will hit back when he plus and minus, he also increases tariff in his trade. And as far as I'm concerned, they are defranchising our economy. As far as I'm concerned, they are sabotaging our economy. They are sabotaging the economy which President Buhari is trying to put in order. The transport manager, the transport and Ministry of Transport and Muhammad is trying to put things in order, but shipping companies are not getting it well. As far as I'm concerned, they are littering their empty containers in our country, using our, our trucks as a holding bay, using their trucks which you know in their own civilized city, they call it. They use our, 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 our country to do use a dumping ground. What they do if a vessel should arrive that they should take the empties out of the port, they will allow they will allow the, 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 the vessel to go to go to Ghana to put uh, to, 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 to pick um, 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 uh, and that to another country, which is totally unacceptable in my country. As far as I'm concerned. Federal government should look into this. Ministry of Transport should sanction whoever he was meant to sanction to get things done well. As far as I'm concerned, Amechi is trying. Amechi is trying to put everything in order, but shipping company is disfranchising, is useless his effort. As far as I'm concerned, they are totally disfranchising us. Okay, talking about containers on stem, do you still pay for this? Yeah, container, container on stemming, for now, each container on stemming will pay. 200,000 Naira, instead of 70,000 Naira, they normally pay for transfer. So as far as I'm concerned, even when they are doing stemming, stemming is okay, because it's, it's also even a more, a, 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 a helping the lifespan of the road. If I were to be the Minister of Transport, I, I will alter the terminals which would give the, the license to operate to go on stemming on the waters, transfer these containers, then you see that our roads will be free. All the whole empty should transfer through. If, if any container is being taken from Tinkan is going to Okoko, they should find a way they put it on a water channel. They should channel it from, since they are doing stemming, they should have a holding bay in Okoko, which they will, they, will, they, will, they, will, they, will, they will they will empty our roads. All the whole containers should go through the water sea. As far as I'm concerned, if Ministry of Transport should enforce them, put tax force on, the, on this, on, 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 on this, I believe a good result will be we will be we will, we will anchor. For example, if these transporters know they are right, they will sue shipping company. Shipping company has to pay them for carrying their their their, their containers using their cars to the holding bay. But because you know my country wants business to flow, they want to make economy to boom, and everybody we 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 we, we, we overlook some certain things, which is it was not meant to be done that way. As far as I'm concerned, they are. Say, saying that we don't have law in our country. And I believe by Ministry of Transport writing to the, the, the normal authority to put all these things on track. Okay. Um, so recently, um, the Nigerian Shippers Council paid a, a council visit to some shipping companies, like 
10 May, uh, Max Line and others, appealing for them, which they agree to extend the three days um, demerit period to 21 days. Has this in any way been... What do you understand by, 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 by three, 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 three days? I want to ask you, you are asking me a question. All these containers you see here is on lease. Nobody pays anything over there. So if they are saying I'm doing business with you, they should check me their containers. If their containers is being dumped anywhere, there's what they call recovery in, in every company. Their company is big. As far as I'm concerned, if they want to do business, they should clear anything concerning Dumoric. We are not meant to pay Dumoric in any consignment because we are doing business. We are generating internal revenue. We move cargo. Okay, all right. Uh, also, MPA, the Nigerian Port Authority, uh, made some move to resolve the problem of holding, holding bay by sanctioning some shipping companies. Have they? They have not improved. So the they, believe, they believe if you take their license, we importers, I import, and we freight forwarders. Whenever they re record the the, the the strike or whatever they record, the sanction they give them that will pay too money. So they they lay they they, they they go back to extortors. What I call it is defrauding. What if they say they give you three days? What's two three days for? That three days, if container they tell you that the container arrived Nigeria today is 18th. If they tell you the container have arrived Nigeria 18 before they are done with their, their, their discharge from the port, I believe that two days is gone. So the three days is nothing. As far as I'm concerned, I am moving a motion of they should stop anything consigning to Morage for now. All shipping companies. All right, we're still hanging out with Engineer Omar. He's the CEO of Global, and he has a lot to talk about. Don't worry, keep watching. We'll be right back. What terminal operators do, and they have a link to shipping companies. When shipping companies, when terminal operator asks you to bring money, and you tell them you don't have money to drop drop empties, like yesterday I had an example. One transporter ran ran into my office, said, "Sir, he wants to drop container, and they asked him to bring seventy thousand naira." I said, "Who asks you to bring money? I want to witness this myself." He said, "They're over there." I said, "How much have you paid?" He said, "One twenty." I said, "You paid one twenty for what?" Said to drop is empty that he has queued for five days even after paying the money. I said, Where is the receipt? I need to see the evidence. He said, Oh, God, there is no evidence, but I will point the person. I made an arrest to find out what they are saying is the truth, to bring in the police to do investigation. And the police intervened and find out what I was saying is the truth. I called the terminal operator, look at what is going on by your nose. They are collecting money, drop, dropping empty containers. It's highly defrauding and highly sabotaging our economy. Because when you ask an importer, to, 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 to or, or ask a agent to or ask them pray for us to pay money to drop his empty. He will put the bills back on the importer. If as I said earlier on, if you are meant to go to trade for seventy thousand naira and you have plus and minus 
that you are going to drop the empty with 70,000 naira and plus how many days you are going to be there. You tell the person from here, from Kiriki Lighter Terminal to Threadfair, it's 600,000. When you plus and minus, you are going home with 100,000 after all the whole days. So, I'm telling you that shipping company is a partner of wherever they drop their containers. For example, if you ask them, okay, I don't have this money, they will tell you to go to TI City. That let us see your deal. And the, your deal might be bearing Tinkan. They will ask you to go to Tinkan. But when you give them the money, they drop the empty. So how are they dropping the empty? First of all, they, there must be an insider who will send a signal to them through email to receive the empty. It's highly unprofessional. It's highly defrauding. EFCC and uh, a security agency should move into this to get it done well. Okay. Now let's take a look at the Nigerian custom service. Uh, we now have NICES 2. You know, we moved from NICES 1. Now we are uh, in NICES 2. Now, talking about the ease of doing business, what are some of the challenges you are encountering in terms of doing business in the port, as in having the customs this time around? For example, customs now are getting their job, they're getting their track well. Customs are cooperating, customs are, are doing the right thing they're meant to do to raise internal revenue. As far as KOT lighter terminal is custom, I I, 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 I give them 80%. That's an A for now. Okay, that's beautiful. And also, um, we had an interaction with uh, one of your members, and he said that along the, my two axes, just up the priest there, that the Navy, the Nigerian Navy, the Nigerian Navy men, right there, they're extracting money from there. Are you aware of this? Yeah, I've, I've seen one or two people which I intervened, they left the container. What they do, if you don't give them money, they break the wheel stream of the transporters. Which one has happened to my face? I came down and I intervened, he pleaded. I, I see those officers doing all those things as unprofessional. They don't know what they're doing. They, they were meant to do that for peace and that they're making money in their own pockets. Maybe whoever who posted them there should find out what is happening to their officers what their officers are doing sometimes they connive with spouse they connive with they, they connive with a lot of people there they will tell you they are lying they connive with them to collect this money one has happened to one of my trucks and i intervene they run away so as far as i'm concerned navy are not getting it well there if they posted them there to generate entire revenue or to generate money for themselves or for the government, they should let us know and get it tracked well. All right, okay. In summary, sir, how do you think all of this problem could be solved for us to have a successful ease of doing business? A successful one of that? There's what they call, they have stakeholders. Stakeholders is all about people that have been in the industry for years. Like you, call, like you came to interview me, Nagav. We also have Ankla, our sister brothers there. We also have Ibo Maritime, we also have other association. When we, when we, when we do the business, call meetings for, in, for, for, for stakeholders, I get all this and will be done well. All right. Uh, your final word for um, the transporters, because I think they're really hot now because they don't have businesses around. Like uh, the businesses are already down. So what word do you have for them just to keep them at peace while the shipping companies try to resolve Whatever they need to resolve. You just, you just said they are keeping in peace. They should still hold it on peace and get it done well. All right. Thank you very much for having us with you. Thank you. All right. With that, we come to the end of the program. Maritime business is on beta analysis. And trust me, we've been hanging out with engineer Emmanuel Gomazi. He is the CEO of Global, uh, Emmanuel Globus and Azilia oil and gas, oil and gas um, distribution company. It's been about some time with Engineer Omadi. And we say with this, we come to the end. And we say keep watching our root television. We love you. I remain.